Hey guys, Tim here. Today I'm going to show you how I built this uh, flushing beam uh, that fits into a receiver here. So I was getting tired of always having my flushing beam have all this extra garbage off the bottom, couldn't store it in the garage, whatever. So I've gone ahead and uh, it's already been built, but we'll take a look at it real quick. She's snug. Come on. There we go. Okay, so here's my flushing beam. I've not, I've already had it mounted on this board to get it up to my belly height and then uh, all I've done here is attached a quarter inch piece of plate and this piece of plate is slightly bent that's why we're that's why it fits super tight in there but I've gone out to my scrap pile and I got a piece of square tubing that's uh, what I built my deer heavy stuff lift for that's why I used the skin also so anyway, get a piece of tubing that'll fit inside your receiver. <coughs> and then you see I, I've gone ahead and sandwiched it. We'll take a closer look at, at the build process here. But anyway, that just slides in. So all you have to do is figure out your angle, okay? Because it's going to be different for everybody, especially with different length beams or whatever kind of backer board you've put it to or you don't even need to put it to a backer board really it's however height some guys like to have it steep go down some guys like to go straight out your preference but you just figure out what angle and then go ahead and weld that solid uh, I might end up putting a cap on the end of this being that it's welded right to the end might have some problems with it but I welded both sides but we'll see we'll see how it eventually works but it wouldn't hurt to also drill a hole through so you could put a pin in there and then when you're pulling it in and out but not bad for going out of the scrap pile so here's the process and uh hope it helps you okay so what i got here is a six inch long piece of inch and a half wide and two little quarter inch by quarter inch pieces inch and a half long and what i'm going to do is i'm going to sandwich the two together now this plate here that I have in my hand is five by five approximately I found it in my scrap pile and it's gonna be the, the part that the male part that's gonna slide in now I'm pointing at the spots that need to get welded but that's uh coming up so you gotta just make sure everything fits I might suggest actually leaving the plate in there when it's sandwiched and then going ahead and uh, welding it on the sides, welding those little bars in from the sides. Uh, you'll see I welded mine in from what I'm going to call the face, but that did lead me to a little bit of a problem with some with an arc strike or, or a little BB, slag BB. But you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. So once you get that to your liking, go ahead and bring that to the edge of your workspace, your table, clamp it down. But I'd probably leave that plate sandwiched in there. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and put my ground on there. I'm going to put a tack on the end. But see, that slot, you don't want to get anything in the slot. So if you went from the small side, the inch and a half side, it wouldn't be as big of a problem. But go ahead, get that all tacked up. And then make sure that uh, your plate here still fits in. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm testing it out. My plate slides in nice. But... Uh, what happened with me is after I did my full weld here that I'm going to be doing and it sucked together a little bit more. It drew together and it made it a lot tighter because there is a slight bend in that plate. It must have been out of a shear or something. But it's important to check your fit. See, now this is the side that I would have just should have tacked in the first place. But I went ahead and welded both sides here solid. Here we go, we're finishing up the other side here with this weld. It's just a little downhand, nothing special, just, just securing it.
All right, so put a tack or two on here. I got about a quarter inch of my two by two uh, square tubing showing. And you wanna make sure that you can still bend this because we don't know the angle yet. And what we're gonna do is to test this out is that we're gonna go ahead, tack this up so it's still bendable. You will see me be able to bend it here, right there. See how you can still bend it by hand. And we'll put the plate onto our uh, fleshing beam. That's what we're doing here. We're installing it. And then we'll slide it all together and bend it into position. So when I, when I do my drilling, I've already drilled the, the holes in the plate. And I always like to drill one hole, slide your bolt in, and then you know that you're game on for the second hole here. Okay, so once that's installed, here you go. Get it to the spot that you want. And if you don't have enough weld, it will break off. But once you get it to where you want, slide your, your fleshing beam back out. Go weld that solid front and back across where the sandwich plate meets the 2x2 the two two tube, and you're done. So you just got to figure out your angle. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope that that helps you out in some way, shape, or form. If you're planning on doing a road trip on trapping, trying to figure out packing your flesh and beam, this thing will pack nice and flat. Throw that receiver in there, and you can do it on the fly. So, all right, well, we'll catch you guys uh, next time. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, that like button. Uh, leave a comment. All right, we'll see you.